Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Looks like you are expecting something wonderful, extraordinary today in Jesus' name. It will come. It has come. You will receive. Father, we well, thank you today. We well, bless your name. How great, how good, how wonderful and glorious you are. You have come for your people. A glorious visitation tonight. And I pray, Lord, every remnant of what should not be in our lives, sweep them away in Jesus' name. Do wonders in every life. Bring more joy to every life. We're excited to be here tonight because we're expecting your visitation. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. Please, you can sit down. Tonight, we come to Matthew chapter 21. And I'm reading to you from verse 9. Matthew chapter 1, verse 31, verse 9. And the multitudes that went before him, and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They were full of expectation because of the coming of Christ. Christ the King, Christ the Lord, Christ the supplier of everything we need in life. Christ that will take your life and turn your life around for the better tonight. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? You are here tonight, and the same question they ask, you are asking, Who is this? And the king who has come to visit us from heaven. Is the Savior who has come to save us from all our sins. Is the healer who has come to heal all our sicknesses. Is the mighty deliverer who has come to deliver us from every work of the devil. Who is this? And the one that has replaced, that has come to replace a sadness with joy and laughter. Who is this? Is the one that has come to make the barren fruitful. When he visits, as he visits, as he came from heaven to earth, he came to supply all as lineage. And then he came to qualify us for heaven. So that when we leave here, we'll go to that better eternal place that is made for us because of the king who has come to visit. In verse 11, and the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Galilee. That's what the multitude said. And some people have never gone beyond their village. And some people, they cannot read all the names of those towns on the map. 
There are people that only know the name of their town and the name of their tribe and all they know is Galilee. But there are those of us who already know now that God the Father in heaven has promised a king, a lord, that will come to all the world beyond Galilee, to the Gentiles, to the nations, everywhere, and he comes and is here today to bless you. And in verse 12, verse 12 says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and he overthrew all the tables of the money changers and the seeds of them that sold doves. He came to reconstruct our lives. You know, sometimes we are passing on the road. They are making road construction. They dig a ditch there. They throw the mud over there. They pile some stones there. And everything looks like what is happening here. It's reconstruction. And when it comes to reconstruct our lives, he enters into a temple of a body and then he begins to shake the shakeable and he begins to put this there put this everything looks like confusion what's happening here wait a few minutes and you will know what is happening reformation in your life construction in your life a new scene in your life that when all those things are finally finished and the touch of the Lord comes upon your life tonight when we look at you and those who thought they knew you before they can't recognize you again in verse 13 it says and he said unto them it is reaching. Jesus knows what has been reaching. All those people in the temple, they didn't know the plan of God, the purpose of God, why that temple was there. Tonight, I want to inform you. God knows, Christ knows what has been reaching concerning your life. The road map, the unique plan and purpose, the salvation and the health that had been reaching concerning you. All those things that God had reaching, and as we are going through life, we have not seen what was reaching. We have not followed what was reaching. And our lives are in shambles. Now Christ, the King, came from heaven. He knows the record the Heavenly Father has for you. And tonight, He will make that what was reaching concerning you, He will put it in place in your life. It says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And ye have made it a den of thieves. The people who went to that temple, they never, never thought that the temple was not following the plan and the original purpose and the project. Of, they just went and they thought that's what it should be. And the people who see us and they see a life here, a life there, a torpedo or put upside down. They, they see, they see that's the will of God. That's what God wants. No, the will of God, which is the perfect salvation and healing and health and joy. And and happiness is about to be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. 
And then in verse 14, in verse 14, it says, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The use of that temple, the use of your temple, the use of your life, the use of your body, your destiny, what the Almighty created you for. Praise the Lord tonight. You will see, you will have, you will obtain, you will experience in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the royal visitation of the king from heaven. And Christ is that king. Christ is that reformer. Christ is the one that may, will make your life fit to the original plan and purpose of God. The royal visitation of the king from heaven. Three things we're looking at before we pray. And the prayer tonight will do something definite, heavenly in every life here tonight. Now, number one, the royal visage that pardons earnest sinners royal visage uh, you know when we were very young they, you know our people they used to threaten us with somebody coming if you are crying they say policeman is coming policeman is coming that, that's supposed to make you f p keep quiet. All the peace you have, all the sorrow you have, all the ill treatment you have from other people around you. The policeman is coming. Or if they say a soldier is coming, that's supposed to make you swallow all your pain. And now when they say the king is coming, the chief of the other village is coming. Sometimes what it means is you should pretend now that you're happy, although you are sorrowful. You should pretend that everything is all right, although you know everything is not right. The king is coming. King Jesus is different. Give me a good amen. amen. You see, can they say the king is coming? You are sinful, they say the king is coming. You are depressed and they say the king is coming. You are unfortunate in life and they say the king is coming. The coming of the king. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple. He came to the temple and now he is restructuring everything and he healed them and he healed them all. Number two, the recurrent visits that heal every sickness. You remember the recurring, when we say something is recurring, recurring, like the recurring a decimal, it's coming and coming and coming and up and up and up, and it will never stop visiting your life. The recurrent visits that heal every sickness. Number three is the received visitation that prevents eternal suffering. We're looking at number one. Number one, we're looking at the royal visit that pardons earnest sinners. Some people don't like their names. 
why did they give me this kind of name? Because this is what I know it means. I don't like the name. Well, change the name if you don't like the name. At present, before the king visits you, your name is a sinner. You cannot do any other thing about the name. Adam and Eve conferred that name on you. Society, looking at who you are, how you live, in the, pro in the private, in the public, they conferred that name on you. Your own character confirms that name, that that's your name. Society, everyone that knows who you are, and they know your action, and they know your character, they affirm that that is your name. If you don't like your name, change the name. And Christ has come. Tonight, he will change that name. Christ has come. The heavenly visitor, redeemer, has come. Congratulations tonight. A change is coming with your name. Heaven will not call you that name anymore. God will not call you that name anymore. And Christ that confirms and conveys that new name, it will not call you the old name a sinner anymore in Jesus' name. And when you kneel down to pray anytime, the Heavenly Father will look at you. He will not call you a sinner because a sinner has no heritage in heaven. He will change your name tonight. He will change your life tonight. We're looking at Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Mark chapter 2 verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. He has come to visit Capernaum. And then in verse 2, it says in verse 2, and straightway, that means immediately, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. When a king speaks, it's different from when the poor man on the street speaks. When the creator of heaven and earth speaks, it's different from the creature speaking. If he speaks to even the storm of life, and he says, peace be still. There will be immediate response from the sea, from the roaring of the sea, because the sea, the sky, the forest, the ocean, the man, the demon, anyone he speaks to cannot receive the word of the king. What word will the Savior speak? Saving word. What word with a healer speak? Healing word. What word with royalty will the king speak? Royal word. Kingly word. What word will the deliverer speak? A delivering word. And he spake, preached the word unto them. 
the word you are hearing is this word. Saving word. Healing word. Deliverance word. Redemptive word. When you hear that, it goes into your heart. And everything that needs to be done for your salvation, salvation will happen to you. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. We will say they came late. The place was already filled up before they came. And this man, paralyzed and impotent, worthless and useless to himself he couldn't do anything for himself four men carried him on a stretcher one at every corner and they came late and the man didn't say we came late there's no seat take me back home when you are honest when you know this is the final point of call. When you know today something must happen. You will be honest. You will not allow the crowd to hinder you. You will not allow the challenges to stop you and be in your way. What did they do? Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And when they could not come near unto him because of the press, because of the crowd, because of the multitude, they uncovered the roof. That's being honest. That's being honest. That's saying today, today, I must have solution to my problem. They went and uncovered the roof where he was. What will people say to that kind of action? Honest people who want to solve their problem that very time, they don't care. They don't mind what people say. How will people look at us? How did they feel? How would they feel about us? Honest people don't think about what will they say? How will they think? They came for miracle, miracle they must have. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. As you are honest tonight, I'm saying nothing will hinder me. The Savior must save me. The healer must heal me. The deliverer must deliver me. The redeemer must redeem me. And the king that came from heaven must drop a blessing from heaven upon my life tonight. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. What's faith? Coming to the Savior. What's faith? Refusing to give up. What's faith? Being honest and saying, Today, today is the day of my salvation. You know, when a person is so sick, they put him on a stretcher and they are bringing him up, he may feel dizzy, as if I am fainting. And some people say, okay, leave it there, leave it there. I remain in my paralysis. You will not remain in your paralysis. Yeah. It's all their faith. 
what ordinary people will not do. They will say, okay, the place is filled up. I'll come back home. If there's any other chance, any other day, then I will come. Honest people don't talk like that. When he saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, isn't that enough? When the king calls you son, when the king calls you daughter, that is pregnant with meaning. Son, will you send me to hell as your son? No, son. Will you punish me for all the evil I've done? No, my son. Do you love me to provide everything I need in life? Yes, my son. Tonight, he calls you son. Tonight, he calls you daughter. As you have come with faith, and you are intent on getting connection with Christ, son, daughter, your destiny will change. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Glory. Somebody shout glory. The number of sins, we don't know, whatever the number, thy sins be forgiven thee. The depths and the terribleness of the sin, we don't know. Oh, no matter how terrible your sins be forgiven thee. Only royalty can say that and confirm that. The kings of the world normally, naturally, when you have all those sins, they are many and they are heavy and they are terrible. They don't say your sins be forgiven. They take you up and go and put you in prison. This is the great king from heaven. The great savior from heaven. The great redeemer from heaven. And he says, son. He didn't say that before they brought the man in front of him. It's when you come to Christ. And you trust him. I'm a terrible sinner. But I'm seeking my Savior. I found him. And he's the only Savior. No other person can save me except Jesus. And then I brush everything aside. I am earnest. No hindrance. Nothing to stop me. And I get to him and I said, here I am. Do whatever you like with me. That's the time when you come to him with all your heart. That's the time I call you son, daughter. Thy sins be forgiven thee. The royal visit that pardons honest sinners. Did you see the change in his name from sinner to son? Somebody there. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for her. It changed tonight. The change of your destiny. The change of your life. Joy comes to you. Look at who is calling you son. Heaven opens up for you. Now you go out of this place tonight to say, I am a son. No, you are a sinner. Jesus changed that. And he says, now I am son. And he says, my sin, he bundles everything together. And he says, thy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
Say amen if you accept that. I'm coming to number two now. Point number two, the recurrent visits that heal every sickness. You know, everywhere Jesus went, Jerusalem, Capernaum, Samaria, everywhere he went, that's, he, the visits occurred and occurred and occurred again. Did you see what he did on Thursday when we started? He visited us. He healed the sick. Did you see what happened on Friday, the following day? He healed because it's a recurrent thing. A recurrent thing. And now you have come today. What maybe you are not here yesterday. Maybe you are here for whatever reason. You didn't get the healing. Today. Today. I said today. That person you brought in here will be healed. Today. That thing that is making a noise in your head. That thing will come to a calm. Tonight, that person that was chained because of madness, the chain will be removed tonight in Jesus' name. And the person who has been walking, not with the leg, but with the hand and the buttocks, you know, just like that. Tonight is when you will stand up and walk like a gentleman. The the recurring visits that heal every sickness. Look at Mark chapter 2 verse 9. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. He is our king. He's saying to forgive sin or to heal the sick, the same for him. At one is as easy as the other. To forgive a terrible sin and to heal a terrible sickness, the same. He does the two in the same way. With one word, the sin, so terrible, so deep, so great, long studying, is forgiven. And then the sickness, so terrible and so painful, and long standing, they call it incurable. He heals that sickness, in a, it's as easy as forgiving our sin. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, But that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, it says to the sick of the palsy. Look at verse 11. I say unto thee, Look, there are many people, there were many people there, but he said, I say unto thee. This is the one that was earnest. And he wanted healing from the healer. He identified himself by his earnestness. He wasn't like just part of the crowd. He said, Tonight I came for healing. I am honest about it. The crowd could not stop me. And my feeling will not stop me. And my thinking that days have been so long, that will not stop me. He got it like you'll get it tonight. I say unto thee, 
Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Verse 12. And immediately he arose. Immediately he arose. If somebody calls you and tells you something, and you don't think about it, you don't act about it, he tells you point blank, I'm talking to you, arise, take up your bed, and you didn't uh, budge. After five minutes, after ten minutes, after a day, what did he say? I've forgotten what he said. I want to do it now, but I've forgotten. We have to have immediate response to the word of the king. He's talking to you. He says, arise and take up your bed. He is the one that said, arise. He knows I am healed already. That's why he gave me that word. And what he says I can do, I can do. When he, when he tells you, open your eyes, look up, you can see the light, you can see the people. He told me, open your eyes. After that final, amen. And if he said so, he knows something has happened. I now open my eyes and I will see. He told those lepers, he said, go show yourselves to the priest but the leprosy appeared to still be there but he told us he said go show yourself to the priest if he said so he knows what has happened and we're going to prove it has happened and tonight he says give up your sickness give up your weakness Give up your infirmity. He said so. I know it is done. I know it is done. In you, you will see it. Look at that verse 12. And immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all. Before us all tonight, we will see you. You were lame before, but Christ said, Arise, take up your bed. You will you'll be pushing the wheelchair in front of you. He said so. He is the truth, the life, and the way. He said so. He said it to you. It will happen. And so it says, and is so much that they were all amazed. Your miracle will amaze many people that see you. Your healing will surprise many people that see you. They were all amazed. That is the way it happens every time. Jesus spoke to that blind man. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went and he came back seeing. You came tonight. Your blind eyes will see. When the people saw him, they were amazed. They said, is he or is he not? Oh, somebody said, it's not him, he was blind. It's somebody that looks like him. And the man had them talking about him. You'll hear them talking about you. Is that the man that had stroke before? Oh, they say, no, it looks, it's his uh, twin brother. 
Then you will say, hear me, it is me. Now I can walk. Now I can stand. Is that the woman that had goiter before? No, it's not her. You know her. Now she had goiter. It's not her. And then you will say, yes, it's me. Where is your goiter? It's not my property. It's not mine. And Jesus said, goiter is not yours. And then he took it away and threw it away. All those sicknesses, they are not yours. They are not mine anymore. I said they are not mine anymore. Christ, the healer, has visited me. I am healed. It's, it's so much that the world amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. What you have never seen, you will see tonight. Recurrent visits. Look at Luke chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 7, verse 19. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou that he that shall come or do we look for another are you the savior or do we look for another are you the healer or do we look for another are you the deliverer that will break every chain of insanity or do we look for another Are you the way to salvation? Or do we look for another? Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist, John Baptist, has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that shall come, or look we for another? Instead of answering the question by word, he answered the question by a wonder. Other people can only answer such a question by the word of mouth. But he answered the question by the wonder of the master. Look at 21. In verse 21, and in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues. Any question you are asking tonight, the Lord will answer with a miracle. He will answer with wonder of wonders in your life in Jesus' name. You are asking a question, is he the Savior or do we look for another? He answers that question by forgiving your sin, by taking your guilt away, by bringing salvation to your life. Then you know your question is answered. Are you the healer? Or do we look for another? He answers that question with healing. Healing will come to answer your question in Jesus' name. Are you the yoke breaker? Or do we look for another? He answers that question by breaking the yoke in your life. Are you the life giver? I am dying. Life is going out of me. Are you the life giver? 
he answers the question by giving your life tonight and so we're told that same hour many were cured of their infirmities and their plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave them sight look at verse 22 then jesus answered unto them go your way and tell john what things ye have seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and to the poor the gospel the good news is preached and declared answer so will come from heaven to you tonight all your doubts, all your misgivings, miracle will answer that question. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the received visitation that prevents eternal suffering. He is the one that blocks the way to eternal suffering. No other person can do that. No other person can build a barricade that you will not get suffering eternally. All the barricades anybody can build. The wind of the judgment of God will blow everything down. But the king in his royal visit that he comes to visit you tonight he is the only one that can prevent you from eternal suffering and it's not partial whosoever shall call on the name of the lord will be saved salvation tonight eternal life tonight Thank God you will not perish. Thank God I will not perish. Because Christ the Savior that prevents eternal doom, eternal damnation, eternal punishment, eternal suffering that Christ has come and he says, I come to you at the royalty if you receive me then all questions of hell is totally forgotten for you the received visitation i stand at the door and knock at your door if anyone will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in into him. When Christ lives in you, you cannot carry Christ in you to hell, to damnation. Christ lives in you. And the only place you can go is heaven. You are going to heaven. Once Christ comes in and you receive him and you abide in him and you stay with him and he stays with you, heaven is guaranteed for you. Amen. Amen. Look at John chapter 1 verse 11. He came unto his own and his own Received him not. You know why? They had to drop tradition and then embrace transformation. He came unto his own and his own received him not. You know why? They had to drop the law 
of the old covenant and have and receive the love of the new covenant. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. You know why? They had to forsake self made man and have the savior made man. Their pride. I turned over a new leaf. Their pride. I saved myself. Their pride, self-righteousness. They had to drop that and have the righteousness of God coming through Christ. And for, for those traditional Jewish worshippers, that was too much for them. But then in verse 12, in verse 12 it says, But as many as received him. They said those, all those laws, all those uh, Jewish traditions, they have not helped me for centuries. And now Christ has come, the Savior has come, salvation has come. As many as received him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Self-righteousness. The self-made man who wants to brag. The self-made woman who wants to brag. I saved myself. That bragging will never surface. Because you cannot save yourself. I want you to, you know, you don't even have to try. You can imagine. You are wearing boots, you are wearing shoes that has straps, string, and then you bend down. And you want to pull yourself up through those with those strings. Not possible. Only He is the Savior, only He is the Redeemer. And when we receive him, isn't that very simple? As simple as somebody knocking at your door and go there and you open the door and you say, come in. And Jesus says, I came from heaven. I came to redeem you. I came to save you. Receive him. Open the door. Look at him. Say, come in, and then it becomes your savior, it becomes your Lord, it becomes your redeemer, and then he gives you the power to become the son of God, the daughter of God, even to them that believe on his name. Simple, you take that simple step tonight. You will have salvation. You will have healing. You will have deliverance. You will have joy. And the suffering, the sorrow of your life will be taken away. Congratulations, salvation has come to you. The king has come to your door. The royalty has come and is approaching you. I brought salvation from heaven and I'm here to give you that salvation from heaven. And it doesn't matter the number. As many as received him. To them he gave the power to become. Become. You will become. Become you'll become and heaven will recognize you have become a child of God even to them that believe on his name the time has come where are you the time has come praise the Lord you are now going to become son daughter of God 
it's about a nice clothes. Very simple. He came from heaven to forgive our sin and to set us free and to make us children of God. To change our title, to change our nature, to change what we were called so that we do not remain sinners we now become the sons and the daughters of God you want that to happen and you are accepting that offer of salvation and forgiveness and freedom now you raise up your hands wherever you are praise the Lord he sees you there already and he's smiling at you and he's happy about you. That royalty has come to change your life. And you can see it. And you believe it. And you are raising up your hand. Here, on the radio, over the television, online, everywhere. You are responding right now. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. You are so happy. You identify yourself. I'm not going to. Be, I'm now going to become a son of God, a daughter of God. Raise up your hand and stand up. As you are standing up, tell the Lord, I hear your word of mercy. I hear your word of salvation. I hear your word of redemption. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. And you will do what you said you'll do. You'll give me the power, the privilege to become a son of God, a daughter of God. Keep on standing. We're praying together now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. The love that rejects nobody. The love that accepts everyone who comes. And I pray that you shower that love upon everyone receiving your salvation now in Jesus' name. Forgive and forget all the sins of the past. Wash them and set them free. Confirm the joy of salvation in every heart. And Lord, I pray you change their names. They are no more sinners. They are now sons and daughters of God. Change their nature. Lord, take away the nature of Satan and bring your nature unto them like father, like son, like father, like daughters. Com Confirm your salvation in every heart. You told that man, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Immediately, the, the sins were forgiven. You are telling all these who are standing, men, women, boys, girls, your sins are forgiven. And immediately, it is done already. Thank you, Lord. Salvation has come to every heart that has received Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. It is done. We'll call on our officiating minister tonight to help us through this. And after that, we'll come for the miracle healing.
We praise the Lord for what he has done this evening. The counselors should immediately move to where they responded to the altar call. Move to them very fast and attend to them. We have few moments and the man of God will be coming up to pray for us. So we are going to use this time to write your names and take essential information about you. So the counselors will move to them very fast. Tonight, we thank the Lord for what he has done. You have responded to the heavenly call. You have crossed from darkness into the light. Give your name, your proper name, and the information that they will ask you. We are at this time reminding you that all the converts, there is going to be a special meeting. That's the lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus by tomorrow. So as the counselors are writing your names, ensure that you give them your right name and the addresses. And tomorrow in the afternoon, you will join us by 1.30 p.m. here at the pavilions. So let's take note of that. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link for you. You will see the link gckhk.org slash connect. You will see it there. You see it below your player. Click on it and you will see a form. Fill the form so that we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus 233-552-455. Plus two three three five five. Listen to the zero five five two four five one nine five five zero five five two four five one nine five five. The counselors should be very fast about what they are doing. The man of God is ready to come and minister to you. Prepare yourself for your miracle this evening. Yes, 
Also, there is a, a special GCK package. All the past and present GCK Crusade and Ministers Conference messages preached by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi are available in customized flash drives and SD card formats. The messages are also available for download into mobile devices. You can visit the live media sales stand for your copies. So if you are listening via radio and television, the you have to send your to the lo this location address, the international address, plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. This one is for the international listeners. The first one we gave you is for the Ghana GCK Secretariat. Counselors, let's be fast. The man of God is about to minister to you. Let's attend to them very fast. Wherever we are, let's attend to them. We encourage you to stay around because the man of God is coming to come up to pray for you. This is now the time for you to receive your miracle. You have been received into the kingdom. Now is the time for you to enjoy the miracle of the Lord. The man of God is coming up. Now is the time for you to receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. I see that you are expecting already. You are already standing up for your miracle. You see the healer we are waiting for or shall we look for another? And remember that question, the Lord answered by performing miracle. Are you the deliverer we are waiting for or do we look for another? Jesus says he is the one. And you are the candidate for the miracle. And it's going to happen now. Because immediately Jesus performed those miracles and he said, Your master John Baptist sent you. Have you seen? Go and tell. Tonight we will see. I will see. And then I will go and tell. You leave the heart where you have the challenge, the problem, the sickness, the tumor, the swelling, the pain. Lay, lay your hand there. And raise up the other hand. Remember, immediately we say the final amen. It is done. Let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name. We already give you thanks because we know you are going to do it. You are going to heal the sick. You are going to deliver the demonized. 
you are going to roll all the mountains away you are going to solve all our problems you are going to work miracle healing in every life you have never failed you cannot fail manifest your power on everyone now in jesus name spirit of insanity madness i command you come out in jesus name all those chains and shackles they are loose and you are free now in jesus name I pray, Lord, for the people that have any swelling in their body. Goiter, hunchback, swelling in private places. Lord, take them away now in Jesus' name. That long-standing problem of cancer, Lord, lay your hand upon them. Let the anointing that breaks the yoke, break the yoke of that cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Tuberculosis, you are healed in Jesus' name. Yes. I pray for those who have diabetes. They go through uh, the restroom over and over many times in the day, in the night. Touch them now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Yes. And all those who have whatever it is, malaria, typhoid, dizziness, oh Lord, I pray, touch them miraculously, heal them now in Jesus' name. And those who have those invisible objects moving about in their body, causing them pain and concern, touch them now. All those uh, objects, Come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. And those who are deaf and dumb, the Lord touch your ear right now, the membranes and your, your tongue, everything be loose and speak out clearly and hear normally in Jesus' name. Yeah. Those who are blind, those who have cataract, those who have glaucoma, those who have dim eyesight, or there's something wrong with your retina back there. I pray the Lord will touch you at the point of need. You open your eyes, you will see in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke, rise up and walk. With that hand, stretch it out and be made whole. Paralyzed legs, receive strength now. Get up, walk in Jesus' name. Lord, miracles of every kind. To the right, to the left, to the center, to the back, in front, online, radio, television, right now is the time of receiving miracles. Amen. Confirm it, Lord. It is done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Check yourself before you sit down. You'll see the manifestation of the miracle power of God in your life right there tonight. And then you'll come and give your testimony.